Hey everybody, it's still Tap in here, and I've just finished up our work on the Russian campaign deluxe fifth edition from GMT Games. So I thought I'd show you a little bit about the module itself and show you how it works. So when you first fire up the module, you'll get a welcome screen like you see here. You can choose to start a new game offline, look for game online, or load a save game, which you probably won't have because you're, if you're watching this, you're probably new to the module. So we're just going to go ahead and start a new game offline. Click the next button. There are some setup options. You can set up campaign, fall blau scenarios, zitadel scenario, and begration scenario. You can also click new, which is effectively is the same thing as campaign, by the way. But, you know, I didn't want to confuse people, so we put two options in here. We're going to select campaign to show you what you will expect to see when you fire this up. Go ahead and select a side. We're going to sign in as solo, so it will give us full access to everything. There's not much in the way of hidden information, but there is one notable piece that I want you to be aware of. So we'll click finish, and voila, here is our map. It's oriented top down. You can zoom out using the zoom keys on your toolbar. So if you click the middle button, by the way, a lot of guys don't know this. You can have it fit the width of your screen, which I find to be super convenient. So there you go. It is a memory intensive module, so if you're using a Mac, you may want to uh, go into the properties and up the, uh, the threshold for your memory usage uh, for this particular module. Now, where's all the game pieces? Come on, this is supposed to be the campaign. Where are they? Well, first things first, let's look at the markers up here in the markers tray. We can resize this by just clicking and dragging around. All of these markers here, there are an infinite supply of them. You drag them onto the map. They exist on the map. You right-click on them. You can clone them, delete them, or do whatever you like with them from there. We'll show you some more about those in just a moment. The combat tab has just markers for combat declaration. That's these arrows. And the odds in that particular combat, that's the marker on the right. I'll show you a more efficient way to use those in just a moment. The units are found in the order of battle windows located on your toolbar. There's one for the Russians and one for the Axis. How about that? We even have both sides in this module. So what, what you're going to see when you open this up is you're going to see basically the play display that you come that, that comes in the box that you're probably familiar with. But if you slide the, the, the scrolling bar over to your right, you'll see that there is another uh, setup mat an order of battle display that has all of the optional units. And both of these are fully populated for both sides. Standard game, optional game. Standard game, optional game. What I, The reason why I didn't put any of these markers on the map is because from this point, you need to decide, well, what am I going to do? Am I going to play the optional game or am I going to play the standard game? If I'm going to play the standard game, I just click on the standard game button here on the toolbar and voila if i slide my mouse over you'll see that there's nothing here it just got rid of all of the optionals and so i'm limited to what is on the left hand side of my screen conversely if i'm the if i'm going to play the optional game i don't want any of the standard pieces i click the standard excuse me i clicked the wrong button i click the optional game button and what that does is it gets rid of all the standard pieces it basically does the opposite if i click both buttons by the way it'll get rid of everything and then it's game over. So the undo button would be your buddy in such an instance. So we're gonna go ahead and undo to fully populate everything back up again. There you go. So how do I get these on the, on the game board? Well, it's really easy. All you gotta do is drag them from the map or from the, the order battle display to the map. If you are a Mac user, there's a phenomenon that Vassal's been doing for a while, and sometimes you'll drag something from one window to another, and it simply vanishes. Where did it go? Nobody truly knows. So if that happens, undo, and then what I've found is I just click it around up here, and then I drag it to the map, and then it works again. So great is the mystery of that. All right, so if that happens to you, that's the story behind it. Uh, I find it's just really easy to go ahead and just stack them like so and then just drag the stacks onto the map. There you are. I'm gonna zoom in here to show you a few things about the markers. They all have movement tags because we move them. If I start moving them around further, you'll see they got movement trails. Now, some guys hate them. I like them because they help me to catch my own mistakes, which I make many of, so I like them. And I build the modules for me, really. So. 
If you don't like the movement trails, I've done something new in this module. I've made it so you can turn them off by clicking on this button on the toolbar, the button to the left of the fall blouse scenario button. Uh, if you click on that, it just gets rid of all the movement trails. So you can move to your heart's content and they won't exist. Wonderful. To get rid of the moved tags, you can click on the button on your toolbar or let's just move this German host forward. Okay, they've all moved. I can use the escape button on my keyboard. I find that to be super convenient. Uh, it's one of those little Easter eggs that you'll probably enjoy. So the escape button is your buddy for getting rid of movement tags. Now let's get some Russians on here. Russian order of battle. Here they are. We're going to click the standard game so all the optionals are gone. We'll throw some Baltic, Baltic district dudes onto the map. And we'll move these Germans back over the border. And we'll do some kind of setup here. I don't know. Let's see. Throw this guy in here. By the way, a lot of people don't know this little trick with Vassal 2 is that, let's say I throw this little 3-4 German on top. If I want him to go to the bottom, I've only selected the one unit. Click the down uh, button on your keyboard and you go to the bottom. Up key, uh, button will go to the top. Side arrows, left and right, will cycle the, its position within the stack. A lot of people don't know that handy little trick. All right, so I've just moved some guys around. Let's just say this is part of our setup here. Uh, and there's our tanks. Okay. Get rid of our movement tags and our movement trails, and there you go. Now I see that there is one little issue you should be aware of. You'll notice we got movement tags for the Russians, but not for the Germans. And here's why. I clicked that button when I had units off the map. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and fix that before um, I release the module to you so that it globally gets rid of movement trails. Uh, this is one of the reasons I do these videos too. I catch little bugs along the way. So there you go. Show you a couple tricks here. When you right click on a unit, you'll see there is an option to put a unit out of supply. I stole a marker from another GMT game. I don't remember which one, but there you go. You got a little out of supply layer. It's not a marker. It just becomes a layer on the game piece. How do you get rid of it? Well, you either uh, right click on it or you do a control S on that unit and it'll get rid of that out of supply notation. It's not something you're going to use a whole lot, but sometimes it's helpful. So I decided to build that into the module. Those pieces, again, do not exist in the physical copy. You can also send units to the off map box to the replacement pool by doing the control E or surrendered by doing a control X. Place a railroad marker movement on top of the unit by doing a control R. We'll just move that off to the side. Right click on it to do a combat declaration arrow. Now when you do this, it shows up in the very middle of the, uh, of the hex. And so when this happens, I like to have these things floating. So I've made these pieces so they do not stack because I like to be able to manipulate them around and not make them forcibly conform to the hex grid. You can rotate them by using the arrow keys on your keyboard. So we can just, you know, do a little spinner and say we're going to attack this hex here and so forth. Uh, one of the things you'll see, it says attack on there. If you do a control or carriage return while you have this thing selected, do a carriage return and you can change the label. Say we want to make this a two to one label. So we're declaring a two to one attack on this particular location. I don't know if that's true. Oh, actually, it is true. How about that? I was just guessing. So there you go, a two to one attack. And I've made that notation. And then let's say I have this situation set up here. So I've got these guys attacking this particular location. Well, I can do a couple of things here. I can drag this guy out and then I can clone it. Control C. When I cloned it, it was exactly on top of the other marker. You notice it didn't offset at all. So, uh, you know, if I clone it like 20 times, I just cloned it about 50 times here. Um, there's a whole bunch of them stuck in here now. If that ever happens, it's not that big of a deal. I'll show you why in just a minute. But the point is you can rotate these things around uh, to show which stacks are attacking which units. If you have a situation where you have multiple or have different units attacking, I can kind of expand it and adjust from there. So that's how I've chosen to have this. I use this button here up in there in the toolbar next to the sequence of play button to get rid of all those arrows. So that's kind of a handy tool, especially if I'm starting off and I'm making a mistake with them, I just might get rid of them all. And then maybe I'll start over, do a, a control C, 
do a control C, rotate, control C, and then put this guy here. Those are my attack declarations. Say I don't want to go through the trouble of changing the label on these. I can always do a control shift C and put the combat odds marker on these guys. And doing a control plus or minus on my keyboard allows me to adjust the odds. That being a two to one odds. This one here being what? Eight, two, three, six, nine, twelve, and 60 odds. Another two to one. So I can actually just copy this thing and move it over and effectively do the same thing. I can go ahead and grab some stukas, and I like to make it look like they're dropping bombs on those communist bad guys. Or if I've got Stimovics dropping on those Nazis. I can have it float over the hex. I like, I, it's just my personal preference. I like that. So if you clone these guys, they will be exactly on top of one another, but it does allow you to set these cool little, you know, visuals. And, uh, and so there you go. So if I've used this guy, the combat adds now bump up to three, four, five, and three, four, five. There you go. When I'm done with all my combats, I go ahead and hit this button here, and it gets rid of those. I've made the Stukas that you can delete them manually as needed uh, because you can just reproduce them out of here. I find that that's the more efficient way to use those markers in the game. All right, so you can do all kinds of neat things from the right click. With the, uh, with the Soviets, there is an option here called the Vlasov Army. When you do that, it puts a little Balkan Kreuz up in the upper left-hand corner of the game piece, indicating it's now effectively a German unit. Just bear in mind that if you do that, it's still going to go, the right click's still going to send it to the wrong windows, and that's because Vassal doesn't know the rules of the game. Uh, so the Vassal still thinks these are Russian, so you'll have to, if you're playing with that particular option, uh, you'll need to know a couple of things. First of all, that Vlasov army is only available to select types of units. The Vassal module does not enforce those rules just like in the physical game, you need to know the rules yourself. So you'll just need to manage that on your own. And if they end up in the, uh, see, I don't even know if they go to the access replacement. If, uh, if, that's, if that's possible, you'd have to manually drag them there. Uh, and how you would do that is I would just, you know, zoom way out and, you know, drag it off like so. But I don't know that that's possible because I haven't read all the rules to that. So you're free to explore that on your own. Maybe you don't like, uh, you don't have to manually go around and get rid of all these railroad movement markers. Well, there is a button on the toolbar that will clear them away for you. So that's kind of a cool thing. And uh, like I said, with the, uh, the button that gets rid of the, uh, the movement trails, that's something else that's kind of handy. Uh, we'll go ahead and correct that little problem as well before we release this to the public. I think that's about it for the units. Let me show you a couple things here. The weather marker is located in the weather chart. You can access that from the toolbar. If you want to know what the historic weather is, it's conveniently located in your rule book. Uh, there wasn't a chart in the game for it, so look it up in your rules and you can use the historic. Otherwise, you can flip this marker over to, do, to its plus side or to its negative side, use it along the track here as necessary. Uh, to mark the weather die roll modifiers. The weather markers themselves, uh, if you are going to use two of them, they are located up here. If you're only going to use one of them, um, just drag the other one away. Um, you change the weather by right clicking on them and so forth. So there you go. That's how weather works in the game. Sequence of play just helps you to step through the sequence of play. It doesn't move anything on the board, doesn't move any, any uh, turn markers or anything. It's just a handy play way to keep track of where you are in the game, especially if you're playing by email. There is a uh, notes tab that you can use to, you know, write notes to one another. You know, if you want to tell Uncle Joe he's playing wrong, this is, would be another way you could do it. Uh, you can make notes to yourselves and so forth in here. So there you go. There are three scenario setup windows for Citadel, Fallblau, Bagration, and what we've got in the module is a populated version of these, or you can free to populate them on your own if you want to use the optional rules. And, uh, and so the, it shows you on the board where you know, your setup line would be, and you can set it up on your own. Now, obviously, some players will want this module to do everything for them, and clearly it doesn't. So if you anticipate you're going to be playing the standard game and the campaign, well, just you know, do your standard setup for both sides or whatever, whatever you prefer, and then save it 
you know, and you can you can kind of have your own little setup file uh, yourself. Just if you do that, make sure you sign out as an observer. Uh, that frees up all the player seats. When you uh, reload that module, it'll a- or that save file, it'll ask you what side you want to play. If you don't sign out as a player, that side will not be available to someone else when they load that seat file. Charts are all in the charts window. All the charts that shipped with the game, anyways, are all in here. Uh, let's show you a couple other things. Oh, you're going to love this. Right around love, <laughs> you can uh, shift and right click on this area around love, and you can get rid of the mountains there. You, basically, you engage that little overlay that shipped with the game, click away, and it's fine. The only way to activate is by holding the shift key and right clicking, and you'll see the option to either have the printed terrain or the optional. Uh, what else did I put in the module you should know about? 28.7 buttons on your toolbar give you access to some esoteric uh, optional rules and units, a couple of which did not ship with the game apparently, so I made a couple of, uh, I just photoshopped a couple. So here you go, the 18th Mountain Corps and the 65th Mountain or excuse me, 65th core for the Germans are with the Yugoslavian units per one of the random chits that you can draw. What's in this deck here is basically a stack of six numbered chits. So to draw a random one, you pull it out, right click, choose to unhide it, or you can choose to peek. Um, if you choose to peek, by the way, it'll allow you to see what it is, but when you click away, it's hidden, and then you can drag it out here. Your opponent won't be able to see it. Okay, once you unhide it, it's visible to everybody. Of course, you could always just leave it in this window here. See, there's that nutty thing that Vassal does. Okay, once you leave it in here, you know, your opponent won't be able to access it anyways because this window can only be accessed by the solo player and the Axis player. This one here can be accessed only by the uh, Russian player or the solo player. So there you go. Not a whole lot going on in the Russian side one. You have the randomized chits, just like in the... Uh, uh, the Axis private window, but there's also a button here called Soviet Trucking Industries. And to show you what that does, I'm going to open up the Soviets window here. And you know what? I'm just going to start this over because I want you to see this and it only works with the optionals. So we'll just load up this. We're going to click on optional game, which gets rid of all of our standard units. Okay. Opening up. Oh, I got to sign in as the solo or Russia. Okay, if I'm the Russians and I drew the right chit for the trucking industries, I click this button here and you'll see it bumped up the movement values of all these units. Um, all the tank cores and tank armies went up to six and seven movement points. The um, uh, All of the, the rifle armies went up to four and so forth. There's no way to undo that. So, <laughs> well, you can click the undo button. That would that would actually undo it. So that is the um, that's one of the cool things in the module that you should be aware of. I think that's just about it. If you have any questions, uh, you can always email me. But I think that that's pretty much the long and the short of it for the for the Vassal module. We'll be uploading it this weekend, so hopefully it'll be available to you real soon. Hope you enjoy the module. Hope you enjoy playing this game. It really is an amazing game, and this is a beautiful treatment of it. And uh, it was a it just it, this was a fun module to work on. Got some new projects that need my attention, so I'm fixing to move on to them. If you do spot any bugs, let me know. I'll be happy to try to address those as soon as I can. I'm Joel Toppin. Hope you enjoyed this instructional video.